Chanel has many admirers, most of which are adults that have learned the art of fly fishing, thanks to his teachings. But he loves kids, and they love him. Steve's son is an aspiring angler who is not wasting time consulting his idol on casting techniques. Estancia Maria Betty was founded in 1897 and given its name by Patagonian pioneer Jose Menendez in honor of his wife. The couple were royalty in this part of the world, having built an empire by selling goods to ships crossing the Straits of Magellan. In his early days, coming down to Tierra del Fuego, Mel fished the Rio Grande with the descendants of Jose Menendez. Alejandro Menendez Betty is today in charge of the fly fishing operation of what was once Argentina's biggest wool producing ranch. Double hookups are not uncommon on the Rio Grande. The sheer volume of trout on this river makes this almost a daily occurrence. The sea run browns venture out to the ocean as many as four times during their lives, only to come back to the river to spawn every three years or so, gaining one kilo per year while out at sea. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's very small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Villa burned down several years back and was rebuilt as a fishing lodge. A lot has changed since Mel's first visit almost 40 years ago, but the greenhouse and the original snooker table were beautifully restored. The spirit of the house remains intact, and the only noticeable change is that the land and cattle tycoons that spent many a memorable night in this faraway bastion of luxury have now been replaced by different power brokers. The latter carry a rod instead of a big stick. The Rio Grande has a complex system of pool rotations. This guarantees that anglers will never have to share their piece of river, even on days when many fly fishermen from several different lodges are enjoying the waters. What are you doing? 
está muy bueno. Incluso está para flote, igual ahí debe estar buena para flote. Mira, movió una en el final del pozo. There are no bad pools on the Rio Grande, and Guide Alberto is responsible for the coordination that guarantees happiness to all. The day that I set off to fish up there in the sky, I wish I could leave this land without a roll being left of my loop for me to stretch. A sea of trout for us to fish for my children and yours too. Remember my angler friend, that of this we're not the owners. We just live a dream that we have borrowed. And it's fair that what we have be returned as it was and not worse. I hope God gives us the skills to leave it the way it is. Many times as I looked at so many stars up in the skies, I longed and dreamt that on this ground our grandchildren could step. Start thinking very deeply and fish with head up high. From now on, we will be angling for our children's fish. And remember who cursed you if you kill them for no reason. He deserved his freedom, but we should have seen that. Most of my fishing has been here on the Maria Behetti because of my friend Booby. Booby Calvin, guy from Buenos Aires, married one of the Menendez family that owned this ranch. In fact, Josefina's mother have invited a couple of very famous people. There are two generals of the army and the minister of finance or economics is coming down. And it started to rain and it poured and the roads became mud and the cars that we had would get stuck all the time. They got a guy named Jorge Donovan. He was their guide. And what he did is, the car gets stuck, he'd make the generals push. He got in the car, the two generals were pushing in the back end, the car caught hold, took off, and both generals into the mud <laughs> from head to toe. And, and that poor lady, that poor lady was, was horrified. So she contacted Booby, the son-in-law and who she didn't care that much for, I have to tell you. But she, she was desperate. She said, Booby, take these people and catch them a fish. Well, these were older guys, you know. He staggered down, he had trouble walking up and slippery and sliding. So Booby takes his rod and he turns over and hands him the handle of the rod because he's going to help him up. Booby yanks on the rod and there's a hook through the hook keeper. Wham! Into this guy's hand. He screams with pain. I mean, it's oh terrible. God. Stuck to the rod. They couldn't take it off. One of the Menendez family jumps in the car and drives to town. Except the road to town was not as good as it is today. There was a big puddle about halfway there. Drives into the puddle, car dies. And they started hitchhiking, but there's very few cars on this road. They ran out into the road. And he, he stood there with his hands out like this, uh, and finally a car stopped. Finally, talks him into a ride back into town. And at the hospital, they take the hand. They took the hook out. That woman wouldn't talk to Booby for a moment.
more than one day in the river. Look at that. Uh -huh. Beautiful, shiny oh, fish. Oh man, I love that the fish like that. Ah, pretty fish. Yeah, pretty fish. That's fine. It is difficult to explain why people are inclined to follow others. Why some human beings have the charisma and the aura that inspires others. Why one wishes to be next to them and to learn from them. Whatever the answer might be, Mel is one of those special people. And as such, his travels through Patagonia inspire the fishing masses. First, I must tell all of you how pleased and happy and grateful I am that you are having this, this wonderful party for me and my friends. This, you know, is one of my favorite clubs, and I feel like I am a real part of this club. <laughs> Looks beautiful. Congratulations. That's a beautiful, beautiful. Well, I think enough food. This is a working man city. Uh, what they do is they, because it's so distant, they get a little better salary down here. And because the climate is terrible. Yeah. And this town has grown from 5,000 people when I first came uh, to more than 50,000 people yeah, right wow. now. About 35 years ago, 37 years ago. Something. Since that, uh, you come in every year? Every year. When I first came and told these people about catch and release, they laughed at me. <laughs> they couldn't believe that people had to catch a fish, put them back in the water. It, they couldn't believe it. Right now, if they caught you killing a fish on the river, you'd be in trouble. The fish in this river are absolutely 25 or 30 percent bigger than they were 30 years ago. Really? Wow. This is one of the few rivers in the world that's just been going straight up. So it's kind of exciting down here. My fly is there and I want to cast I here. have to make two or three false casts. Dun, dun, when the line dun, changes dun. from going back to going forward. Now I am using much less back cast space. The weighted flies here, you pull it all around in a circle and cast. Fini. Termine. Gracias. Termine. So, we're gonna catch a fish today? Of course. We have a wonderful pool, I'm sure. Every time. Every time. <laughs> this man will give me the straight story. <laughs> yes. The secret is out about Argentine beef. Mel loves many things about coming down here, but the traditional barbecues, otherwise known as asados, are the best motivation to leave the river.
The greatest single day fishing that I ever saw, ever, on this river or any river in my entire career was on the Francisco. A friend named Tim Buffington and I started fishing there one morning. And before one o'clock in the afternoon, Tim landed, landed 34 sea trout. And I kept running over to take pictures of him. I landed 12 on a floating line. In that pool that morning, we landed 34 and 12, 46 sea trout, honest to goodness. And Tim, that evening, landed 15 additional. He, had the, he said, the day of my life. That is good. Tequila fly. Oof. Tequila. Look at that. That is tequila fly. It's very good. You know who invented that fly? Who? Jim Keeley. Lorianne's friend. So she called it a tequila. Patagonia. I know of many reasons that I continue to return to my adopted country, and I'm sure there's a fair number that I can't really define. Overall, however, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel real good. Each visit, almost a renewal, a rejuvenation. Part of it, I'm sure, is the unique geology of this area, the contrast of huge mountains and wild treeless deserts, of lush forests, and the incredible kaleidoscopic display of the vast Patagonian skies. Perhaps it's the unique diversity of wildlife, the Bandurias,